Indonesia, rivers are seen as garbage dumps. We're really on a mission to protect them, to change the perspective that, you know, we should start respecting one of our world's most important resource, our rivers. And this is the land that we're trying to protect for generations to come. Some of the villages that we've worked in initially, um, because the river has been cleaned, we, you know, we've seen fish population come back, we don't see any more plastics, and that is like the best thing in the world. We've collected, you know, almost 600,000 kilos of plastic, um, 450 kilos of organic waste. I think we have mountains of trash in six facilities. And we're really working on ways of you know, giving this plastic a second life. That goes back to one of our six facilities where we sort all the trash. Plastic bags are the number one plastic we're finding in the rivers. So looking at every material and thinking, you know, what can we do with this waste? Uh, so we're doing a lot of R&D. We're turning plastic bags into these sheets that we can then turn into furniture. We're using it to make showers. We're using it to do uh, interiors and houses. We're hoping to come out with a catalog of furniture pieces that we'll be releasing um, and hopefully selling to fund back the, um, the operation. This new pilot that we're now scaling throughout the country. Uh, we call it our village model, where we build a facility, we install 15 to 30 of these barriers, we hire 12 people from the local village, and that village becomes fully um, self-sustaining. The idea is to fully clean it up, clean its rivers, educate the village. You know, done as much as we could from a really young age, from beach cleanups to making videos and raising awareness and educating people. We feel that a village graduates officially from Sinai Watch. The dream is that maybe by 2030, 2040, there's no more Sinai Watch because every single river on this island has been cleaned.